Hello and welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, you will learn about the XLOOKUP function in Excel. This video is perfect for beginners, so you will be able to follow along easily. Also, you can download this practice sheet from the link in the description below. Now, let's get started. XLOOKUP is a powerful new function in Excel that makes searching for data simpler and more efficient. It was introduced to overcome the limitations of older functions like VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP and index match. Now here we have this simple data set of a student name and the second column is their pending fees. Now here again I have the student name and I want to find out the pending fee for this particular student. So how do we use the xlookup function here? Let's start by writing the function. I'll write here equals then x lookup and then parenthesis. Now first we have to insert this lookup value which is what we are looking for. So we are looking for this person. So I'm going to select this cell. All right. Then comma. Now after this, we have to write the lookup array. This means what is the source of this person in simple terms. So we can see that this person belongs in this very student name column. So I'm going to select this student name column. All right. And then in the formula, I'll write comma. Then we have to write the return array, which means where is our result? It is in this pending fee column, right? Because we are looking for the pending fee. And yeah, that's it. Now I'm going to close the parenthesis and hit enter. And we have the pending fee for Joe, right? Now, similarly, or we can just simply change the name. Let's say Michael T and hit enter. And we have the pending fee for Michael. So this is the basic use of XLOOKUP function. Let's take another quick example for our practice. Now for the next example, I will click here on example 2 wildcard sheet. And here we have the exact same data of student name, pending fee, and we want to find out pending fee. But there is a catch here. We want something specific. Instead of writing the full student name, for example, here we have Michael T. So instead of writing here, Michael T, I just want to write the first name Michael and I want the pending fee for the same. Similarly, if I want to write uh, Joe Rogers, no, I want to write just Joe. So if I write just Joe, I want the pending fee of Joe to be displayed here. So we are going to use the xlookup function here. And to write that function, we'll simply say equals and then xlookup open parenthesis. Now is it is the lookup value. What are we looking for? We are looking for this student. So I'll click on it. But this is just the first name. So we are going to append wildcard here. So it's something like ampersand. And then in quotation marks, I will write a star. All right. So this means I'm looking for this name. This is the first name and whatever comes after it, which means this wildcard. Just ignore that. We only look, we are only looking for the first name. After this is the comma. Then we have the lookup array. Where is this from? Of course, this is from this column of the student names. Then we have another comma. All right. Now, what is the return array? We are looking for the pending fees. So select this column of pending fees. And then we have a comma. Then we have if not found. We don't need this. So I'm going to skip it by writing another comma. Then we have match mode. This is we. This is really important for wildcard. As you can see, it says zero for exact match, one match, uh, one for exact match or next smaller item. Then we have another one exact match or next larger item, and then we have this wildcard character match, which is denoted by two. So in order to use the wildcard feature of XLOOKUP, we need to write here two. And once we write two, just close the parenthesis and hit enter. And as you can see, we have the pending fee for Joe, which is $2,000. Now let's uh, write for Bob. So I'm just going to write the first name. I'll write Bob and hit enter. And we have the pending fee for Bob. Now, before ending the video, let's take a more little complex problem. So here I'm going to click on this sheet, example three, multiple conditions. Now here we have a little bit modified data. We have the same student names, but we have pending fee for different months. This is for January, this is for Feb, and this is for March. Now here I want to basically find the pending fee based on the month, right? So let's say student name is Alice, and for Alice I want to find out the pending fee for March, right? So we have multiple conditions here. We have a student name, and then we have a month also. So here we are going to use xlookup again. So here in this cell, I will write equals xlookup 
and then parenthesis. Now, what are we looking for? We are looking for this value, this student, right? So, I'll click on it and then uh, comma. Now, what is the lookup array, which means where does this value actually come from? So, it comes from this student name column. So, we'll select this one and then comma. Now, the return array is what we exactly want, right? But here, we have another criteria of month, right? So, instead of writing a return array, I'm going to write another function inside, which is going to be xlookup again. So, here, I'll type x look up again and then open parenthesis and now I, well, it will ask for the look up value now in this case i'm looking for this month which is here it's not visible because of this text box but it is in g4 so i'll write g4 all right which is the month and then comma then we have the look up array now where does this month come from of course here are the months so we are looking for this look up array and then we have another comma then we have the return array all right what do we want we want of course the pending fee so i'm going to select three of these columns that have all the pending fee data and then i'm just simply going to close the parenthesis for the first xlookup function and then for the second xlookup function as well and once i hit enter as you can see we have the pending fee for alice for the month of march which is uh, 4400 dollars if we look here alice March, it's $4,400. Similarly, if I uh, look for some other student, let's say I am looking for Michael T uh, for March, it says $2,000 and it's exactly the same. Let's say uh, for January, and it is exactly $8,000 as it is written here. Now, you need to understand that XLOOKUP can be a little confusing if you are a beginner. So, the best way to master it is to practice it. I am going to create another video in which we will take a couple of more examples on how to use the XLOOKUP function. Also, don't forget to download this practice sheet from the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video, share it with your friends and I will see you in the next one.